guys, how's it going? All the J's coming in, Jake, John, Juan, Julia. Hi Danilo, Sal, how you doing? James. Hi Rochelle. Hi John. How you doing, James? That's good. Everybody's staying safe in these very unusual times. We've been in full total lockdown now since the 14th of March. I haven't actually left my property since the beginning of April. Okay, we are going to wait to the top of the hour, guys, and then we'll get going. Federico. Where's everybody from? Let us know in your chat. Come away from where you live. He's fine, Juan. He couldn't make the uh, webinar last night because there was a fire in his neighborhood. So one of those controlled fires that got out of um, Argentina. Hola, Federico. Yeah, Kansas, so Jake. Norfolk, UK. Hey, John. Fellow Brit. I was in Kansas last uh, October. Yeah, we had a room full for the uh, training. It was great. We're just going to wait for the top of the hour and then get going, guys. So Argentina, UK, New York, Kansas. I'm sat here in Spain. Texas, I was there in February, Danilo. I had a great steak in Texas. Oh, sunny Florida, yeah. Yes, I was in Houston, yeah. I had an amazing steak. Well, I had quite a few, actually. I had a good time. I was there for a week. Okay. Okay, guys, we're going to get going. Um, so, Elliot Wave today. Okay, just Elliot Wave. Nothing else. I'm going to try and keep these on topic, if you like. Um, so it is being recorded. So what I want to do first is I'm going to, going to work through some things when you are looking at setting these up. And I know it's Thursday and, you know, we, you know there's one day left. But I just want to look at ZB on the five minute just to go through the process that I do uh, to look at um, setting this up. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to look at the stochastic. For me, if we look at the top left hand, this is how I set my charts up, by the way, guys. Not everybody does it the same as me. Uh, okay, so um, for me, what I like to do is I have my bits and bias and then the stochastic on the top chart, and then I have my uh, Elliott Wave, the oscillator and also the um, roller coaster on the bottom chart. So they're both on the left, both five minute charts, I can see. So the first thing I can see is we've had a really long move up today on this five minute chart. And then we've moved back and we've just tipped the green zone and hit a wave four, just as we've reopened here. Okay, 
So the next thing I want to look at is the stochastics. Good. We've gone from overbought to oversold. We've crossed over in there. That's good. 535 is good, guys. Remember, what I'm using is just test. Okay. This here is still not working properly, but that is 90 to 140 right now. So all's good, but that's not the end of the story for me. Everything's good. I've got to look for an entry strategy, but actually I just want to go back on the 60 minute a second. And I want to look for major points of control. So decision zones, if you like, and you, a lot of you guys know me I, on the five clay club. I'd like to draw in those zones. So I've taken them all off to ZB so we can start to put those on. So we see this pivot here, this pivot here, double bottom, important price zone. Got another pivot here. That's, Let's join, those, let's join those dots up, if you like, and let's drag them along to here. So I've taken in, if I'm going to go a little higher there, I'm going to take in this bottom pivot here. Let's draw that in. This bottom pivot there, there. That defines the bottom of my zone. And then again, I've got that pivot there. I've got a really strong price price point there. I'm going to put my teeth back in. Okay, really strong this week. Okay, we have pushed through that. Now we're coming back down again. So what I want to do is I want to go back to that five minute time frame. And does that coincide with one of my pullback zones? Hi Trevor. Hi Gary. How you doing? Um, does that put just you know does that coincide with one of my pullback zones on the five minute? really important to me because this is a big strong price zone right now so I'll go back to my five minutes forget those yellow dots now let me just take them off okay there we go now if i was looking for a really great fifth wave move right here i would really white like this to come down this is me setting this up. This is me thinking, talking to myself. Am I going to trade this fifth wave on ZB? I know the stock assets good right now. I know I've got some room left for a little deeper pullback on this wave four. It may not come to that zone, but that would be the sweet spot for me. Now, this is a different time of the day. We've had the close. Now we've just reopened. So if it doesn't come back down, what is my entry strategy is the next thing okay i'm not going to worry about the risk to reward right now the thing for me is where's my entry what have i got to consider on entry i've got to consider this price point here these double um these wicks rejections they've rejected there okay that's some major resistance yeah other price points not really going to really affect me there, but these this is going to affect me. Now, remember, we use the 6.4 moving average high for our entry position. So if we were to enter above here, risk reward to that resistance is not very good. The way we, we measure that risk reward is use the FIB extensions again. So we go, it's a three click process, the FIB extension. We click once just below the wave four for the stop loss. We then move up to where we think our entry may be for now. Okay, so it's going to be around about here. Next five minute candle, 181.02. Click the second time. And then for me, just click the third time again on the same price. So we that now have a one to one risk reward to that fifth wave target zone. Okay, one to 0.35 ish to this resistance level where we had rejections previously. So at this moment in time, I always say to my guys uh, when we're trading every day that this has got more work to do for me to want to trade it. Okay, so I found enough reasons at this moment in time not to want to trade this fifth wave. It's got more work to do. It's got to pull back deeper. It's got to be that the stars have got to be more aligned. Okay, so this has got to pull back deeper. And what I'd be doing if this was during the day, I'd actually be waiting. Uh, to see if we do get that sweet spot, does it pull down a little further? Have I got a better risk to reward? Okay, with a better entry strategy. So, you know, let's discuss what that could look like. So, I'm going to use the annotation tool again here. 
let's just say, for example, we get some moves down here like this. Okay. We get, we find support around here maybe, and it comes along. We can look for a better entry strategy here. This is a long way up. This five, the, the six, four moving averages coming down. Let's get the risk reward again. We go for the low here, for example. Uh, we go for, a, you know, by this time, the six, four moving average is going to be around about here. I think I want to be above this sort of, this, this green candle that failed there. Um, so that would be probably my entry. Now, this entry strategy with a deeper pullback to these lows here has a better risk reward for me. Let's just pull that back. So we have nearly one to one to this uh, danger zone, if you like, which isn't bad, especially for this instrument. And we have a one to 1.8 to the fifth wave target zone. So that looks, that looks better. So at this moment in time, I found a reason not to get in this trade. What I need to do is keep an eye on it, track its momentum down, see where it finds support again, and look for a better entry strategy. If that doesn't happen, I don't trade it. Stick to the rules, walk away. Okay. Let's just remove all of those. Remember, your job as a trader is to find reasons not to get in the trade. Okay, what I want to do now is just go to a stock, do the same sort of thing, PHC. Okay, so now this is my stock uh, setup here. Uh, so this is a freebie for you guys, <laughs> the short that I'm looking at at the moment. But what I want to do first, I want to go back to the weekly. Remember, one of the things I teach at these live training events uh, and online that we did before uh, the other weekend is we look to put in these weekly channels here. Really, really strong weekly channel, strong bullish move, and we've broken out of that recently, okay? We've broken out of that uh, on the weekly. Have we got any major weekly support resistance zones? You can see here, I'm gonna just zoom in a little bit here, just make it a little bigger. Okay, so I've got two weeks, double bottom here, and that then coincides with the bottom of this weekly channel. This is a really strong price, price point here. So I have, I've had what I call coincidence at that linear support and resistance zone. So we've had a double bottom, two week candles really, you know, had that double bottom and they both found support at that non-linear, uh, the bottom end of that channel. So that's really, really important to me right now. Uh, that's where, you know, uh, the, the, this price has made some major decisions. There's another one down here, a little beep of it. There's some more down here as well. So, you know, let's, let's, um, let's not be shy. Let's put those in, but let's go to the daily first. Go back to the daily. Okay, so for me right now, the one that's really, let's get rid of this thing, the annotations stay, they're annoying. Okay, so the main thing for me at this moment in time is there's been a great roller coaster short here, fantastic, great trade, took out the trading stock. We've had a wave four. The wave four has pulled back and found resistance at that big weekly zone that we discussed there. Okay, this is BHC, the ticker BHC, it's a health company, okay? Steve? Channels are useful no matter what strategy you're trading. You are framing the chart, as I call it. So you need channels and the linear support and resistance zones. Very, very important. You need to understand the behavior, Trevor, okay? Um, hopefully, I will be able to come back to the USA by the end of the year and I will be training everybody live how to frame the charts. One of the most important things, okay? So this is BHC. So what I, I've got to go through my checklist. So the, 
the six, uh, the the 535 moving average looked good to me. Okay, we are got the false breakout on the on the bottom of the stochastic there on that oversold zone. Really strong bearish move. We can see that with this recent uh, roller coaster short, which was fantastic. The next thing is the stochastics crossed over in this overbought zone just here at the top. So we're all good. We've had a double top as well at this uh, at this wave four pullback at this big weekly linear support and resistance zone. So let's zoom in even further. We've found resistance just at the top end, bottom end, top end of the green, bottom end of the um, amber. So we've got an 80 to 85 percent probability it's going to go on and hit this fifth wave move. <clears throat> we've got the double top. Traditionally, when you trade a double top, you go short below this pivot here. If I just put this line on so you can see a little better, that's where you would go short. Okay, 16.16. Let me put that in a very bright color so you can see it. So traditionally, the strategy with a double top like we've had here is that you would go short below this pivot okay now for me i wanted to get earnings out of the way first you see down here we've had earnings today i wanted that reaction today to earnings just to confirm where we are okay now the next thing is my entry strategy needs to be below the low today stop above the wave four i put that um fib extension in so my risk to reward to the fifth wave target zone in the middle of it, one to 1.75, good risk to reward, giving it a little bit of space from, from uh, today's low. Today's low was 15.53. I'm looking for an entry at 15.30. I could probably be a little bit more aggressive, but I can change my mind in the morning when I see the pre-market action, because at this moment in time, this has had a strong move down with volume. So I wanna, it could get down a little bit tomorrow. So I'm thinking, you know, looking at these gap downs, maybe 1530 is a good entry. If I'm seeing pre-market action tomorrow and I can get a better entry, better risk reward, I'll take it. But at this moment in time, this is my strategy because I don't know what that pre-market's gonna be on a Friday because it's Thursday night. Okay, so risk reward, one-to-one -to, -one to the previous wave three target. Fantastic, everything works out. This is a good looking trade. We've gone, we've had earnings. It's been pretty poor, okay? We've had that negative reaction. We've broken that pivot for the double top there. This is looking pretty bearish here. Sensible entry, risk reward, go, okay? Any questions on that? I mean, this could be a five minute chart on, on a futures. It's a, this is a daily chart on a stock. But the main thing is you're going through that process. You're looking at where you are on the weekly, where you are on that channel. It's broken out of that main bullish channel. We've had a pullback against that, that um, bearish move out of that channel. That wave four has found resistance at that big linear support and resistance zone from the weekly. This is looking pretty hot, okay? I can't find a reason not to trade it, okay? So this goes on the list to trade and the order goes on for tomorrow. Any questions on that type of stuff? I mean, that's, per, you know, it's pretty perfect um, setup. Not saying it's going to win. I'm just going to say that's the process you need to be going through. So any questions on that? I mean, it's, it's, it, the thing is with this, it's keeping it simple and keeping it repeatable. Go through the same process every single time. Don't try and overcomplicate this checklist, okay? 535, stochastic, pullback zones, linear support resistance zones from the weekly, any from the daily, on the weekly channel, what we got there, where's my stop, where's my entry, what's my risk to reward, all of those tick the box, it's a good looking trade, okay? Don't get, don't overcomplicate it, but for, you've got to go through the checklist. With this Elliott wave, you've got to, everything's got to tie up and you've got to, once it's like that and all the stars are aligned and everything, you just got to go for it, okay? Any questions on this before I move on? Okay, it's not going to be a lengthy one because I am 15 after midnight my time. Uh, so I just want to go through the rules and remind you because you just need to keep repeating them. 
and I'll repeat them once a month on these webinars, but at the end of the day, you've got to get to do it. No, the Elliott Wave, uh, John, doesn't include a scanner. The scanner eh, is very difficult to build at the moment. That's our next uh, thing uh, for the back end of this year. Um, I, I use um, my institutional grade software to scan for those. Um, and, but, you know, for me, uh, a lot of companies at the moment had that massive move down. They've all pulled back. So it's just a matter of going through. Uh, so it's, but yeah, it's difficult to, to find them unless you're like me. I, I get up European morning, seven o'clock, and I start scanning, start looking at stocks. Um, you know, I've got a certain ones that I go through. Uh, and one thing you need to be looking at when you're looking at stocks is that um, if you're going to swing trade stocks on a fifth wave move, the average volume per day has to be over a million shares a day. Okay, so that actually narrows the field quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, they've got to be over $10 as well. So over $10, over a million shares a day. And that's the sort of thing, that's the starter. So where, I haven't entered yet, Rochelle. That's the whole point. The earnings reaction needed to happen today for me to find that entry strategy. So my entry is at 15.30. The traditional entry would have been at 16.16, and that would be what well, would have been the uh, aggressive entry today. But I needed to see this whole candle happen today. Remember, the daily time frame. Uh, on a stock is the most purest because we have an open, a close, a high, and a low. So when we look at this, I know this was greater volume than yesterday because it's a red candle using my bits, uh, okay, uh, indicator. I know we've had earnings. The earnings reaction has been negative. We only pulled back about 0.236. We had a fib retracement there, maybe 3, 0.38. But the main thing is it's remained pretty solid good volume. Now I can go short tomorrow below today's low. Uh, no, that doesn't matter because that's a double top, Rusty. Okay. <laughs> hey, Matty. <laughs> uh, Matty's in my inner circle. We were, only, we were trading today. So uh, I think it's only been about five hours. <laughs> Uh, so no, the the, the crop. The, I mean, these are double. This is double top. You know, this is and the double top is within three percent. So that high here was uh, eighteen eighty nine. This high was eighteen ninety nine. Okay, so that's three percent. So that's classed as a double top. Yeah, Gary, this is a daily time frame. I swing trade mainly off the daily time frame. Um, so the close has gone today. So I'll, I'll uh, you know, pre-market tomorrow, just keeping an eye on this really to see what sort of price is going on pre-market. Uh, you know, at the moment, the order's on at 15.30. You know, I could get a 15.47 below today's low. Uh, let's see what goes off in the market tomorrow morning. Um, but you know, this is this is a, one of the ones on the watch list for the um, the inner circle. I just wanted to go through that because that is a pretty picture perfect. Now it may not be a picture perfect trade, but it's it's okay. Uh, no, because it's not a proper ABC correction. It's an ABCD, and we only carry ABCs. Okay, Dinlo, Dinlo. Uh, this this move here is not an ABC correction. Yeah. A, B, C, D. Yeah, it's not a proper. Uh, my orders are on, Rochelle. So with, with swing trading, uh, I don't day trade on a Friday, but with swing trading, I'll be around in that sort of pre-market session, that hour before the market's open. Just keep an eye on my orders for the swing trades just to make sure that this isn't gapping down too much and I've not got a risk to reward. Just sort of babysitting those. Uh, and then once that's over, I'm, I'm done. Uh, you know, I, I don't um, don't trade day trade on a Friday. Now I wanted to go through one that was a little uglier. Now I've got to find it first. Got to find it. Uh, 
Is it IBM? Yes, okay. So this was IBM. Now, <clears throat> this is ugly, but I'm going to go back to the weekly. Not everything is pretty, okay, in life and in trading. So what I want to do, first of all, is uh, I want to go back and look at this longer term channel on the weekly. This is IBM, okay. Now, I'm not going to go into how I draw these channels. It's on the courses and it takes quite a bit of time. But this is a reasonably good bearish channel on, on the weekly for IBM. We've got a really great um, zone here from these lows. We could put some more in as well. I think, you know, we look at, the, look at this double bottom here on the weekly. Tips in there. So let's just have a look at that. Let's put that one in as well. Does that actually line up with there as well? Uh, no, let's go there. Okay. Just going to go to there. I am going to put this one in as well because that tips in there as well. Okay. So this one really is that double bottom on the weekly there, but it does tip in here if we just zoom in a little bit. So we found resistance at this same zone on that week. Then we pop down to this one as well. Look here, and we, we, we tested that support. So basically, I framed my chart on the weekly. I'm going to go to the daily now. Yeah, green means go, Rochelle. Green means go. So with IBM, now this is an ugly looking way for. Now, you will notice on the top here, we have had the false breakout. Okay, so this is a reasonably weak looking trade. You see the wave has gone all the way into the red zone, but it's not broken the red zone and the 535 is good. So this is the point where you say, okay, if I have a conservative entry, and my risk reward is still good to that fifth wave target zone. And I've got the false breakout on the top, which is, it's not ideal, but no other rules have been broken. And I've gone for a really, really conservative entry here with a stop at 130.4, the entry at 111.65, and the entry is below this pivot and below this big weekly zone. If it can break this support zone, break this pivot, it's good to go. What else is in my way? This bloody thing here as well, okay? So once this comes down here, if we do get that entry, I've got the bottom end of my channel to break back out again. I've got this linear support and resistance zone. This looks like a tough trade, doesn't it, okay? So there's no reason why you can't get in it, but if you do get in it and it gets to this level, you make it risk-free, okay? If it comes and takes you out risk-free, you've lost nothing. If it smashes through this, you've got a good-looking trade. So on the outset, we've got this false breakout bar on the top of the stochastic there, which isn't ideal, but this has happened because we've had this very multi-corrective wave for right up into the red zone here. But this is coming back down again. And right now, this is a, this is a picture of the markets as, as we are right now. We've had this big coronavirus dump. We've had a wave for pullback, and this has happened on a lot of stocks and on the markets. And now we're in this position where do we get the wave for failure and we get the full V uh, recovery, or do we get a second phase of COVID-19 and we come back down on a fifth wave move? Okay. That's, you know, I'm not saying that the, the second wave of, of COVID-19 is the reason for this, but this is the behavior that we're looking at right now. There's a lot of potential shorts setting up, but there's also a lot of potential longs if wave fours are broken and they fail. Okay, so that's another thing to keep an eye on. Everybody tries to concentrate on trading that fifth wave, but what happens if the wave four fails? Most of the time, it fails spectacularly, and you can go the opposite way. So always keep that in mind as well. Let's just go back now to look at this ZB, or ZB for you in the uh, States. 
Uh, pretty flat right now. We are obviously um, into the overnight session, but it's, it's coming down a little bit. But, you know, this has got some major work to do. But, you know, I could wake up in the morning and this has found support here and started to move up again. Uh, and this, this, you know, seven o'clock tomorrow morning is not that far away. Although I won't be getting up that early tomorrow. But, you know, this is just me just keeping an eye on things. Okay. Right. One thing I do want to mention, guys, and I know it's not earlier away, but I do want to mention, because I'm very proud of it, and the emails are going out this weekend, is that we have now got the roller coaster smart list up and running. Okay. This gives you live signals on the roller coaster on futures. Not only that, it gives the win rate. Okay. So we've just had a signal, M2K, short on the two minute this is, I think. Yeah, two minute. Okay, and this, if this triggers, this has got an 83% chance of winning. Okay, this win rate is calculated live from the data. Really, really cool looking thing. And I, 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 the, I, what I do is I have the one, the two, the three, and the five always open above on the other screen there. To give me there 90 percent 6b longs on the five minute those win rates there really really cool so that is on the website now to subscribe to one two three five 15 30 and 60 minute time frames there really 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 excited about that because it's got the win rates on as well really really cool What determines the win rate is, uh, first, it doesn't take the loss out. But the other thing is, um, it, as long as it prints a trailing stop, even if it's just above break even, it's classed as a winner. Okay, Gary? So if I look at, and 2 k is not a good example today, but because uh, they've been pretty crappy. Uh, let's look at 6B because we have, this has been a great uh, bunch of trades today. Um, we were short 6B today. Sorry. So, what determines the win rate is that these trading stops are printed. And again on here, the trading stops adjust every time the candle closes as well for those open trades. Yeah. So this was a winner winner chicken dinner today. Okay. On 6B, we actually traded this one. Okay. Uh, we actually got out about here. It continued to go down though. Uh, we've had a bit of recovery since then. Uh, we've had a wave for pullback. Looks bloody ugly. Okay. But did it, you know, was it worth an entry? Let's have a look. 535 has been good for me on the way for, again, remember how to measure that is you go to the zero line, you click once on a retracement. You go to the highest point of the way three, you click again. Oops. Okay. So it's been quite an erratic way for, okay, but... 535 is good. Was the stochastic good on this three minute on 6B? Okay, mm, not really. We had 22, 22 there. No, it didn't cross over in the oversold zone. So not brilliant. Not a good way for pullback there. That did go against us, but at, you know, at the moment in time, it's working out. And the good thing is, as well is if the, the, the Elliott wave, the fifth wave doesn't quite meet the standard, do you know what? You've got a roller coaster printed here. Really, really, really cool. Okay. So that is uh, in that long on the roller coaster. And in addition, you've got a, you've got a target for that, a fifth wave target up here. Once it starts to print that trailing stop, that's classed as a winner because it's above break even. Uh, so that, you know, we do that comparison. One thing I want to show you today, actually, uh, just digress a little bit, is uh, natural gas. This amazed me on the 60 minute today. 
on the roller coaster. 100% win rate over the last two weeks, okay? Winner, 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 winner. These were small winners, but they were winners. Winner, winner today. Roller coaster, 60 minute natural gas, last two weeks, not one loser, okay? Really, really cool. We digress. We're on Elliott Wave today, okay? Now, today was a bad day for trading Elliott Wave. Not every day is a good day. Why was it? Because most of the day, we weren't trending, okay? So let's look at a yes on the five minute. This is the New York Open. We went, we were pretty rangy for a long time, okay? This is the breakout we actually traded, but we had to be very freaking patient with this one, I must admit. Yes, it is, Matty, absolutely. This is why we're starting to trade it next week. Um, but, you know, we traded this move out today uh, on a different type of strategy, but there was, we're not, we were not trending today at all, okay? Uh, so there was no Elliott Wave. There's no Elliott Wave count. It was just very corrective, very rangy, you know, there was some more, there was opportunities um, during uh, the, you know, the London session and everything, but this was horrible today. We did get this move up. We traded that 2890. I took profit, didn't I? A little bit early, but I had that target of 2890. Uh, 2900 wasn't reached. You know, we, we thought it may do, but it didn't. Then we started to come back down. Look at these zones that I put on there. You know, was that a way for? Not really. Okay, not trending today. None of the index were trending. It was a tough day for uh, day trading uh, indexes today. They, if you're going to trade the fifth wave of an Elliott wave sequence, we you need to be trending. Okay, and it wasn't trending today. So when it's not doing that, you don't look for the trade. You don't try and find something that's not there. Okay. Okay, so we're going to go to the 60 minute time frame now. Again, I'm going to. Did I take it off? I think I took it off. Yeah, let me put it back on again. So I just wanted to, I wanted to use this as an example of isolation as well. But first of all, let's just go back to this wave four on the 60 minute here. Now, I, I don't apologize. It's quite a busy chart this, um, but I, you know, I, I'm trialing a lot of things at the same time. So I know what I'm looking at, uh, but wave four pullback on this 60 minute. Okay. Double bottom from this previous pullback. We've got the 535 looking good. Stochastics looking good. Entry would have been, again, that's, let me get rid of this. I'll leave stuff on, you see. So for me, 60 minute ES, okay? Wave four pullback, green zone. Stochastic good, 535 good. My entry's gotta be above this pivot here. Can you see that? Let me just draw that in on the annotation. Okay, so this pivot here, very, very important to me because it tries it again there and it tries it again there. If I've got a way for a pullback, I need to make sure that I'm above that. Okay, got to be above the danger. Let's clear all those drawings. So, stop loss below the way four. But again, I've got a slightly new low, lower low there. So I'm going to be a little bit cautious there. I'll be, remember, I've got to be above all of this noise here for my entry. Yeah, I've got to be outside the 6-4 moving average high. That was my entry. Risk-reward, 
1 to 1.6, the top end of the fifth wave target zone. Great looking trade. That's the trade. Okay, let me take that off. Whoops. Didn't want to do that. Remove drawing. Okay, so the next thing we track ES, fifth wave hits. We get then a negative move down. We've got a great roller coaster down there. Fantastic. Okay. Now, we're coming into this week. Okay. We had the lows on Monday. Once we've had a big move up, we've had an impulse move down and all that sort of thing, we've got to start to think on the 60 minute, we need to isolate because Monday, Tuesday, this was the low. So this is the start of the trend. Whether that we've been a fifth wave moving there or not, that's been the start of the trend for this week, okay? Which overall is bullish, okay? So we need to take that bar count number there, which is 371. Go and change my start bar to 371. Let it recalculates. Okay, so this is our true wave count for this week. Yeah, we've had an ABC correction in there. Uh, we've had a little bat for a harmonic pattern, something I'm working on at the moment as well. Um, we had a wave four pullback here. So you see this wave four pullback, it's two candles. It's not a wave four pullback on a 60 minute. But if you go down to a 15 minute, for example, it could be. Yeah. So one thing you would be looking at during this week, okay, you get to, you come you wake up Monday, it's still going long. That's where my start bar is. Let it, let it just print out. It prints away free. It comes back. That doesn't quite look right. It's a big red candle there, but it does find support. Okay. So the thing we need to do then is you just go down the time frames and you see if that's a wave four on another time frame and you actually, you know, you go for it. Um, you know, I, this is this is my setup here with um, 60, 15, uh, and two, and that goes to the left hand side of my things there. So, just wanted to show. I always have that 60 minute running, okay, because that's very important to me. So, I can understand what the trend is for the week. Uh, and so, if we go back to 6B, for example. You know, we were trading 6B today. What is the main trend for this week? It is down. Okay. And that started last Thursday. Yeah. So the shorts, we had a great, this hour here, this is the short we had today. Yeah. Um, we had it on a different strategy on a smaller time frame. But on my 60 minute time frame, I need to understand what the trend is for the week. And that's what, that's what I'm doing there. Okay. That's still working out pretty good. That pretty good. Okay, any questions, guys? Okay, it's been 40 minutes, but to be honest, Elliott Wave shouldn't be complicated. Follow the rules, follow the checklist, make sure you framed your chart. There's nothing else to do. If you can't find a reason to get in, not to get in the trade, let's do it. Okay, let's have a look at a couple of stocks for Trevor. Let's look at SQ, Square. we're on the daily here, let's go to the weekly a second, oh that's nasty, remove, sorry this was an old trade on the weekly, okay, remove, okay. Get rid of all this. Okay, I've got, I'm going to leave that on. That's a big zone. Obviously, the highs there as well. Um, that's not really going to come into play now, but I think this will maybe there. Okay, let's just adjust that. So I'm just framing the chart on the weekly quickly. Uh, have we got a trend? 
not on the weekly, I think on the daily, we'd probably look at this current trend right here. Uh, Danilo, the harmonic wave rules, I'm just playing with a, with a new indicator at the moment right now. And um, uh, the way, when, it, when you get a wave four pullback and, you've, and the harmonic pattern has finished, they are pretty hot. <laughs> so we are, you know, I'm just working on it now. It's not, it's not going to be ready for, for another, uh, another three months, but you know, I don't put anything out that I know doesn't work. So uh, with SQ right now, um, we've had earnings. It's had a pretty good reaction because it was crappy earnings. Um, we've got resistance up at 82, $83, something like that. Right now, there is no trade, Trevor. Uh, no trade. So let me just go to CRW, CRWD. Hang on, my computer's catching up there. Let's just put that back to see. Yes. Let's go to the weekly. Ooh, that's ugly. It's a new stock. Weekly's not going to help us there. So what I've got to do, I think we're on a wave three right now, but I slate at these lows, so 193. So let's do that. Three. We've just started this trend, I think. Um, we've got the high of 101.88 we've got some resistance that we've just broken through here which is encouraging for this but right now yeah i mean should be in the roller coaster trade already it's too late to get in there now uh, i'd wait for a pullback trevor You got to wait for a pullback, Trevor, on SQ. There's no, you, you don't go near the highs yet. TRV. Getting ready, isn't it, Matty? Getting ready. 535's good. Stochastic's good. Good risk rewards. Not fantastic. But it's to the bottom of the target zone. Looks pretty good. The main thing is the entries below this pivot. So when you're looking at entry strategies here, guys, the uh, entries below this pivot here as well. Uh, it's an ugly looking chart, yes? But everything else stacks up, so it's not too bad. Oh, yeah, I'm ready for bed, uh, Trevor. Yeah, not uh, that, that. So let me just do BRK and on here it's forward slash B. I mean, to be honest, that there was an earnings play on that, but that you should have entered that just after earnings on the roller coaster, um, Dennis, really. Um, you know, you want to work out a target for this. Are you short on this, uh, Dennis, at the moment? The way to work out a target for this is you go from this low pivot on a FIB extension, low pivot to high pivot. Sorry, wrong way around. It's late. It's very late. In fact, it's early in the morning. So go from high pivot to low pivot, back to high pivot, and you need to change the FIB extension to 110 to 120. 
Giving all my secrets away here. Oh my lord. Get rid of the rest. Okay, that is your initial target for the, oops, that didn't work out very well, did it? Let's try that on again. That's your initial target there, 110 to 120 fib. Go back to the weekly. See where that is. That, oh, look at that. This is no coincidence. That pivot point, that pivot point there, okay? Fib is freaky math. I'm telling you now. Are you, the 110, 120 is your target zone, and look where that is. Pivot there. Do it there, yeah. You can't make this stuff up, honestly. So that's on the weekly. Go back to the daily if you're short already at the roller coaster, Dennis. You know, obviously trail it with your uh, roller coaster training stop here. Um, but again, now we'll go back to Alex's question um, that was talking about the bias on the bits. When you get the roller coaster and uh, signal on this candle here, look at the bias from the bits, it's red. Gives you confidence that that short's good because on a higher time frame, okay, this is the daily. So on a weekly time frame, the bias is bearish. So Alex, when you've got that situation where you get the roller coaster signal, your bias is red, this is a good looking signal, yeah? You've had earnings as well. Got to go for it. Yeah. Does that answer your question, Alex? To be honest, guys, if this pulls back a little bit, uh, back up in here, if it comes back through that uh, that entry, I might look at that. Risk reward isn't fantastic there. Let me get rid of that. Remove drawing. The only thing that concerns me is the move down has been low volume. Um, so risk reward. One to one, $155 target. It's not bad. Uh, not necessarily. Uh, yeah, I mean, Trevor, if you're looking for a roller coaster, your buyer should be the same color. Not, uh, you don't know it's low volume at the time. The signal candle here, Gary, is higher volume because it's a red candle compared to the previous one, okay? So at this point, when you get that signal candle bias on the bits is bearish, you've got increased volume, you've got to go. What concerns me is Tuesday, Wednesday, we did have the move into this trade, okay, but lowering volume each day. That concerns me a little bit here, yeah. So we do have a spinning top here, which is pretty good, uh, spinning top tombstone, whatever you want to call it. That's not bad. That's a rejection of the highs today, but it's a rejection of the highs on lower volume. So for me, I'd be overly cautious and I'm very conservative right now. Okay. I stock trading for you guys, which is not fair, is free. So I, I, I put, I put the trading stop at break even 176.05. Yeah. If that spinning top fails today, because we have a two candlestick pattern here, Anybody tell me what that two candlestick pattern is? What's that? It's a bullish harami, guys. It's an initial sign that, that could turn back up again. It's a baby bullish harami, yeah. It's a bullish harami, okay. So in theory, in theory, this could turn back around. Tomorrow is important. 
If tomorrow we get a lower low, lower high, fantastic. If we get another inside bar tomorrow, I'd be very concerned. I'd be making it risk free. But to be honest, it's Friday. I wouldn't want to carry it over the weekend for the gap. If we get this situation tomorrow, fine. If not, I'd be at risk free, if not getting out. Um, I, I, you know, it's, it's a tough call here, but this, this is the issue for me, this bullish army. I've got to be very, very honest, very careful there. You know, it m might be a one candle wonder, break those lows tomorrow, fine. Not a problem, go for it, um, you know. And, but if it does come back up, I'd be looking to and going for an entry through there. It can do, Alex. Yeah, it can. The bias can change quite quickly on the um, time frame, but not that quickly. I mean, we look at uh, ES today. When it decides to load up. Okay. It doesn't change that quickly. Okay. So um, when we. What it does, it goes to yellow first, which is neutral, which is a warning sign. Okay, I mean, we when we traded this, we trade we actually added a contract at two eight eight seven, didn't we uh, today, Matt? Uh, and when it pushed through there, it went right, and I basically got I took it out up here. Um, but we were bullish bias. You go neutral again, bullish bias. Then we go neutral to bearish bias. Okay, I mean. Remember, this is the 30 minute time frame. We're on the five minute here, but the bias is on the 30 minutes. Okay, Alex. Um, so it doesn't, this is a, it only changes every five minutes, and we go from neutral to bearish first. Okay, so neutral is a warning. Tighten your stops. Okay. Okay, guys, I think I'm going to call it a day there. Um, it's nearly 1 a.m. at my time. I'm probably going to be changing these um, to midday or 12.30 EST because, to be honest, this is uh, it's very late for me. It, it ruins my Fridays uh, and um, I need to change the time. So I'm going to consider that over, over May. Um, but they will be recorded and they will be put up each day anyway. Uh, I can, no one can be happy with any time. Um, but to be honest, I do need a life and I need a Friday because Fridays are, are really important to me. Okay, guys, um, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, enjoy your weekend. Uh, stay safe and I'll speak to you all next week. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Dennis, Matt, Amory, Juan, Rusty, James. Thanks, Alex. Dennis, thank you. Danilo from Argentina, thank you. Cheers, John. Thank you, Rochelle. Here we go.